Hello, this is Dave Litton from the Projects Academy and I want to give you a warm welcome to our Lean Six Sigma Green Belt Masters Series. Now this is a set of six series, this being the first called Lean Six Sigma Foundations. As you'll see shortly, it consists of 18 modules, starting with this overview. Now the primary objective of our Lean Six Sigma Master Series is to help you acquire a Lean Six Sigma Green Belt Practitioner Certification. Indeed, you'll get all the necessary knowledge and skills that will lead to that qualification. Now the emphasis on our Lean Six Sigma Master Series is on how to apply Lean Six Sigma back in the workplace and within your own organization. And you will learn how to improve the performance of your business through the use of the Lean Six Sigma tools and techniques. Now, as you can see from this opening slide, there are two main qualifications that you may wish to take, one or the other normally, either the IASSC or the ASQ. And although the syllabus for both of those exams differs very, very slightly, broadly, their scope of the knowledge of Lean Six Sigma are both the same. So the Lean Six Sigma Master Series has been designed to fully prepare you for the Green Belt, otherwise known as the Practitioner Exam. And you need to be very clear that Lean Six Sigma is a business performance improvement tool. So that as you go through our Master Series, keep the mindset of thinking, how will you apply these to any and all areas within your business? Now the Projects Academy Lean Six Sigma Green Belt Master Series will teach you how to streamline processes, improve business performance, and while we're at it, supercharge your career. And the Lean Six Sigma Green Belt Certification is globally recognized, you'll be pleased to hear, and trusted by Fortune 500 organizations such as GE, BAA, Dyson, Volvo, Rolls-Royce, Deloitte, Disney and Tesla, just to name a few. And if those flagship organizations see the value of Lean Six Sigma, then your career and or your organization can profit greatly from mastering Lean Six Sigma. What you're on now, of course, is one of six steps, and I've called this Lean Six Sigma Foundations. It's important that you use this to get a solid overview of some of the techniques and become familiar with some of the important phrases and jargon. So this Lean Six Sigma foundation step contains, as you can see here, 18 modules. So that when you have studied the foundations and understood them, you'll then be ready to look at the other five steps. And the six phases are, as you can see, the foundations that we're on right now, then the define phase, the measure phase, the analysis phase, the improve phase, and the control phase. Don't worry, we'll be going into great detail in each of those phases as you proceed through our master series of define, measure, analyze, improve, and control is called DMAIC. And this is a data-driven improvement cycle that you can use to improve, to optimize, and stabilize business processes and designs. And the DMAIC improvement tool is the core tool used throughout to drive Six Sigma projects, which is exactly how I've structured this master's series. So here's a nice graphic showing you the overview. That's the foundation step or phase, if you will, that we are currently going through. And this, as you can see, will lay the Lean Six Sigma bedrock of understanding. Then we're into the DMAIC steps themselves, define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. And in this foundations phase, we will expand a little more on what each of those steps are there to do. Now, it's important you understand that DMAIC is not exclusive to Six Sigma, and it could be used as the framework for other improvement applications. Though, as you would expect, the focus here will be entirely on Lean Six Sigma. So, what exactly is Six Sigma? Well, it's a highly disciplined management approach to attain near perfection. And here we're just talking about Six Sigma not lean, which I'll come to shortly. And the reason why we use near perfection is because as you might imagine, us human beings, 
No matter what processes we're involved in doing, we might strive perfection, but there's no such thing as a perfect process, for example. What we're after is that the process is as perfect as it needs to be, as you'll learn shortly. Now, what Six Sigma means, and it obviously has a statistical background, it means out of every million products or processes, whatever it is you create, you'll only get 3.4 of them which are defective, which I think you'd agree is pretty good. So the Six Sigma refers to 3.4 defects. Yes, you could have four or three Six Sigma or even one Sigma, and that might be appropriate depending on the type of the industry. What does Six Sigma give you? Well, it ensures that your customers are satisfied, that your service is consistent, and that any products or services that you create are always done in a quality manner. We'll need to define that much later. And that in use, they have an acceptable performance level. Again, the term acceptable is important here, since as I've said, it depends what you mean by acceptable within a given industry. And assuming you have them, your shareholders will have value because your business will be profitable, your business will be growing healthily, and they will get great shareholder value. So it's a win-win for all stakeholders involved within your business. Let's start by giving a very simple example. Sigma uses the Greek symbol there, and it's used to represent something called standard deviation. Maybe you recall that from college or school. Now, Sigma was defined by a guy called Gauss and popularized by Motorola, who coined the term Six Sigma back in the day. So what is standard deviation? Well, it's a measure of variation that exists in any process. Just imagine you're making yourself a cup of tea or coffee. You fill the kettle up, you boil the water. I suppose you put a spoonful of coffee in. You add milk or sugar to taste and add boiling water. That's a process in and of itself. And that needs to be good enough so that you enjoy your coffee. You'd want to make sure that the water was boiling rather than just lukewarm, as that wouldn't dissolve the coffee and the lower temperature would give you less taste. So you can see that any process has certain variables. And throughout this foundations phase, I'll be giving you a few real world simple examples. So standard deviation is the average distance of the data points from their average. <laughs> what does that mean? Well, here's a simple example. Let's imagine that my morning newspaper is delivered to my house anywhere between 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. Well, my friend in the next village gets their newspaper delivered between 7 a.m. to 7.30 a.m. Well, immediately you can see that on average, my friend has got someone who delivers their newspaper more accurately. They know they'll get it within a half hour time frame, whereas mine is three hours. So that's the common sense intuitiveness you get from that. So what Sigma does, it puts some science behind that where you can use more accurate data points. So let's suppose that I get my daily newspaper over a period of a week, although it's promised between six to nine, there's the times that it was actually delivered over a period of seven days. As you might expect, like any process, and having a newspaper delivered will be part of that process. After all, whoever delivers the newspaper can't do so until the newspapers have arrived and of course there's variances in that from whoever their supplier is. So if you took those times there and you found out what the average time was, that is dividing those different time periods by seven, you'll find the average delivery time is 7.23 a.m. So standard deviation, we'll be looking at the distance of all these data points, each one of those days is a data point from that average of 7.23 a.m. Now, in this case, we're using sigma against a time frame. So looking at the diagram top right, the time from left to right, you're looking at different times from anywhere from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. But of course, the horizontal axis could be looking at different things other than pure time. Much more of that later. So comparing the two similar processes for their sigma values, my friend's newspaper delivery boy is better than mine, okay? And the way in which you'd state this is that Dave's newspaper delivery process has a higher variation compared to his friends. So what you'd want with any process is to have a low variation, consistency, if you will. And that means consistent quality, consistent performance, and consistent customer satisfaction.
And the word we want to use here is something called customer centricity. That is focusing on the customer. And one of the first bits of jargon I want to explain to you is something called the voice of the customer, VOC. So one of the first things you'd want to do is to gather the voice of the customer. Don't worry what that is just yet and translate those requirements from the customer into product features. And the way in which that is done is via something called a quality function deployment. <laughs> There's lots of jargon like that. It's called QFD. And these were loosely used in something called total quality management. So I'm just giving you a bit of background here leading up to Six Sigma. In Six Sigma, for example, the voice of the customer, VOC, is the starting point. And you'll learn all about that in the define phase. Now, operational measures and performance measures, often called KPIs, key performance indicators, are built based on what you've learned from the voice of the customer. Again, I'm just getting you used to some of the jargon here. Now, these measures are called CTQ, critical to quality. There's another piece of jargon you need to take on board. So we've got VOC, we've got KPIs, and we've got CTQs. Like anything in life, after I've shown you how these are used in the define phase, you'll be much more comfortable with these terms. So customers' needs constantly change. That's life. So such changing needs means that processes also need to adapt and evolve. And Six Sigma will enable the achievement of this adaption. Now, throughout the rest of these master series, you and I, we focus on Lean Six Sigma, which uses DMAIC, and that's used for existing systems and processes that need to be improved. But there's another approach called Design for Six Sigma, DFSS, and this is used when creating a new product or service line where the entire system is built to meet customer requirements. So it's very easy. DMAIC is for taking existing processes and systems and improving them, whereas Design for Six Sigma, DFSS, is used when you want to create a new and different product, service, or system. And to use that, we use another acronym, rather difficult to pronounce. DMADV would be the closest you could get to it. And instead of using DMAIC, this starts at define again. If you read around the circle, define, measure, analyze, design, and then verify. A subtle difference, as you can see, because it'd be for a new product, service, or system. Another key phrase is called process orientation. And the reason here is that Six Sigma, quite rightly, identifies that it's the processes that need to be fixed or improved and not the people. So the focus is on processes. Virtually every department activity is perceived as a process or process step. And one of the tools that we will use in Lean Six Sigma is called SIPOC. What does that stand for? Well, it's a high level process map where you look at suppliers, inputs, process outputs, and customers. Again, we'll see this in a later phase. So that every process normally would produce a few outputs, and in turn, each process requires a few inputs. It would look like this. Here in Six Sigma, we can see the inputs provided by the suppliers, whereas the outputs are either used, consumed in some way by internal or external customers the users, if you will, of the output of a given process. And I want you to get used to the idea of the black box approach with a process with inputs and outputs. That way, it can be applied to just about any product or service or a process used within your organization. And so the focus on the process will help us move away from the mindset of fixing people when things don't work, rather to fixing processes. So again, the process orientation is there to improve the outputs of a process or a department. Its process steps and inputs all need to be improved and sometimes suppliers need to be educated. Put simply, people are never penalized in Six Sigma. Now, many industries and functions are people driven, even more so than normal, such as hospitality, entertainment, service lines and functions like human resources, marketing, sales, and administration. So driving strong process orientation across the organization has been found to result in unbelievable both tangible and intangible benefits to customers and organizations. So 
Six Sigma organizations treat these as just a process so that dependency on individuals in all of the above is reduced. Very good. Well, that's a nice start. Do meet up with me again in module two of Lean Six Sigma Foundations, where you and I will dive a little deeper into what's known as the distribution curve. So from me, Dave, thanks for your time. Thanks for your attention. Let's meet up again in module two. Bye for now.